Assalamu alaikum this is Dr Hasna with Hasna's not me and today we're going to talk about the rest of the small intestine we've already discussed the duodenum and now we're talking about the last two parts of the intestine the jejunum and the ileum before i get started with the video i request you all to subscribe to my channel and all of those who haven't subscribed just know that i make a not me a piece of cake so definitely should go ahead and make your life easy by subscribing right away so guys today we're talking about the small intestine we all know it begins with the duodenum which is c-shaped after which the coils begin so the jejunum and ileum they are basically coils all right the jejunum is basically constituting the upper two-fifths of the small intestine whereas the ileum will constitute the lower three-fifths and mostly it is located towards your right side the jejunum begins at the duodenal jejunal flexure we just talked about and the ileum ends at the ileocecal junction after which the large intestine begins the importance of the jejunum and ileum and what you need to know for the examination is the comparison of the two i just want you to know the basic difference between the jejunum and ileum is the fact that jejunum is going to carry out most of your absorption and ileum is going to carry out the absorption on whatever is not absorbed by the jejunum so mostly your jejunum is involved in that absorption keeping that in mind we are going to talk about the difference between the two. and before we get started let me just give you a brief overview this is the lumen of the intestine we are talking about the mucous membrane of the intestine which is basically you can say the lining of this luminal wall this is the mucous membrane all right in the small intestine this mucous membrane isn't just a normal uh, mucous membrane rather this mucous membrane is thrown into folds like that and these folds are quite visible they give a velvety appearance to the small intestine these folds are known as the plica circularis all right and even if we zoom into to one of these folds in the fold even there are these finger like projections that you'll see these will be better visualized under a microscope these finger like projections are the villi all right villi basically the whole uh, point of these folds and these villi is to provide extra surface area for what the major function of the small intestine is absorption so you need as much surface area you can get right so that's why the mucous membrane is first thrown into folds the area is increasing now absorption can take place from here or here or here i hope you get it rather than just one bland a uh, mucous membrane that is not obviously going to carry out that great an absorption i really hope that makes sense to you moreover your mucous membrane has an epithelium and beneath the epithelium there is a uh, submucosa all right the submucosa is an important part uh, the submucosa giving you a more histological view of this because obviously these structures aren't visible to the uh, naked eye you'll see them under a microscope the mucous membrane already thrown into folds and then having the villi beneath the mucous membrane lies your submucosa all right in the submucosa of the mucous membrane of the intestines inside it within it lie your lymphoid follicles all right the lymphoid follicles what are these basically these are collections of masses of uh, your immunity cells like all the lymphocytes are gathered together within the uh, submucosa to form lymphoid follicles and the lymphoid follicles are of two type the solitary lymphoid follicles and the aggregated lymphoid follicles the aggregated lymphoid follicles which mean all of these masses of uh, lymphocytes they start getting aggregated in a specified location and when they do so they become what you call the pyrus patches all right these pyrus patches uh, help fight off infection and these are uh, widely spread within the submucosa of your intestine right and what are solitary lymphoid follicles these are basically just, these are basically masses of all these uh, lymphoid follicles but they're not uh, collected in a specific place they're not aggregated you can say right they're solitary but they exist right to fight off infection uh, so i hope that makes sense to you apart from that jejunum and ileum we all know that these two are intraperitoneal organs they have a big mesentery that we've already studied about and the mesentery is quite large right so the mesentery basically consists of fat that we've already talked about and the mesentery also consists of the vessels that are giving blood supply to the jejunum and ileum so within the mesentery these vessels are going to be known as the vasa recta the vasa recta are basically by definition the arteries that are small and are terminal branches of the arteries that supply your uh, end organs right 
and uh, they do not give any further branches. So in case of jejunum and ileum, the superior mesenteric artery gives your jejunum and ileal branches. These branches, as you can see over here, they go and split up into arcades. And these arcades give supply to the jejunum and ileum all over within the mesentery via these vasa recta. So now that you have an idea of how the jejun jejunum and ileum function and their structures, let's go ahead and uh, talk about some key differences between the two, which is actually your important examination question. Owl fave is something you should remember so that you can talk about the differences. The first difference is that the jejunum occupies the jejunum occupies the upper and left part of the small intestine, whereas the ileum occupies the lower and right part of the intestine. That was pretty easy. Let's move ahead. Uh, w, which means walls of the jejunum are, what do you think they would be? I already mentioned that the jejunum has to perform more absorption than the ileum. So since it has a lot of food in it, the jejunum will have thicker walls as compared to ileum, which will have thinner walls. They'll also be more vascular, obviously to perform function better, more and more blood vessels are needed. And compared to that, your ileum is, sorry about that, less vascular, all right? Then we have lumen. The lumen of jejunum will always obviously be wider as compared to ileum, which will be a narrower lumen. And this will be loaded with food, whereas this will be empty of food. All right, let's go for the difference between the mesentery of the two. The mesentery, I want you to remember, is the fave, F-A-V. F for the fat. The fat of the mesentery is less abundant in case of jejunum. And the fat in the ileal mesentery is more abundant. That is important. A is for the arterial arcades. These are basically rows of the arteries. These arterial arcades, you can see here, these are the small arcades that are formed. Uh, you can see that in the jejunum, these arcades are fewer, whereas in the ileum, these are a lot more, right? So that is the next difference that the arterial arcades are about one to two in the jejunum in contrast to the three or five are arterial arcades within the ileum, right? And then we have the vasa recta. There is a difference between the vasa recta of the two. What are the vasa recta? The terminal branches, right? Very, very small arteries. The vasa recta are going to be longer and fewer in case of jejunum. And in the ileum, the shorter and more numerous, obviously. As you can see here, these are the vasa recta. They are longer and lesser. Whereas in the ileum, you can see these are more abundant and they're smaller, shorter. Next, let's move ahead and talk about the histological difference between the jejunum and ileum. The first part is those mucosal folds we were talking about uh, or the plica circularis. Those mucosal folds, where do you think will be more abundant in case of the place where there is going to be more absorption occurring, right? So in the jejunum, the mucosal folds are a lot more than in the ileum. These mucosal folds are also close to each other in case of jejunum. In ileum, they are very rare, so they are far, far away from each other, all right? And then we have the villi. There is a huge difference in the villi of the two because this has to carry out a lot more absorption, so the villi have to be the villi will be quite large and numerous and in the ileum these will be there will be shorter and there will they will be lesser in quantity these are described as leaf like whereas these are defined as finger like these differences are related to the functions of the two and then there is a difference between the pyres patches that we just talked about what is the difference is that in the jejunum these pyres patches are so rare and they're almost absent and in the ileum they are present so that is a huge difference that the, those lymphoid follicles that are aggregated they are present in the ileum whereas in the jejunum they are absent that is the key difference that you can actually uh, instantly spot or identify if the slide is of the jejunum or ileum similarly the solitary lymph follicles also are lesser in the jejunum and more in the ileum so these were overall the major differences between the jejunum and ileum. Uh, these differences were formed on the basis of their functions, right? So that was all you needed to know about the small intestine. I really hope you understood the video and the comparison because there's a very important examination question. And you subscribe to my channel if you aren't subscribed yet. And thank you so much for watching.